I'm honored to, to be here and thank you for uh, this uh, interview. Um, I have been a uh, professor all of my life. I spent the first uh, seven years of my uh, career at a small liberal arts college and then the bulk of my career I spent at the Pennsylvania State University. And uh, during my career, I uh, taught undergraduate and graduate courses, but all of my scholarly work has been with faculty, trying to help faculty be better teachers. Uh, Post-secondary teachers are not uh, trained to teach like basic educators are. Uh, they develop a great deal of content expertise, but do not get a lot of training in how to teach. And so I have been interested in trying to help them be better teachers, and I would define as better teachers as someone whose students are learning, uh, are learning more. So I have um, visited over 500 colleges and universities in the States and Canada doing workshops for faculty. I edit a national newsletter on college teaching called The Teaching Professor and I have uh, written a number of books uh, on teaching and learning. Some of the books are um, like anthologies that I have edited where other people have written chapters and some of the books are co-authored, but I have about eight books that I have uh, single authored. Um, the book that I am probably most well, most well known for is a book called Learner-Centered Teaching, uh, which proposes a variety of ways that faculty can get more focused on student learning and a little bit less focused on, uh, on teaching. And um, uh, my most recent book is called Inspired college teaching and uh, it's about how you sort of keep yourself as a teacher fresh and invigorated across the career because a lot of times you're going to end up teaching the same class over and over again and while every student is unique after a while pretty soon they ask the same questions and I think a lot of times faculty get kind of get kind of tired and so what are the strategies that you can use as an educator to sort of keep your passion for teaching and to stay uh, fresh and invigorated across because faculty aren't trained to teach, um, there are sort of no professional norms expecting that they will grow and develop as teachers. So a lot of faculty don't read very much about teaching and learning. And this is really unfortunate because there's a great deal of good educational research which would really help them be better teachers. Some of this research is done in the field of education, but some of it is also done in the disciplines as well. So I think the value of the newsletter is that um, it's got short, succinct articles in it. Um, that reference research, that summarize research. It's a very pragmatic publication. It's got a lot of kind of nuts and bolts sort of things. And I think that that really helps faculty because it's something that they can read um, quite, uh, you know, quite quickly. Uh, and they, they respond to uh, that very well. I also do a blog now that comes off of the newsletter and that generates a lot of response. So I'll write about something that's an article in the newsletter like for example giving extra credit yes. and a lot of faculty will exchange ideas and information and opinions about whether or not they should do that. So it's just a different kind of venue to have a conversation about teaching and learning and that's why I think it's important. I think that, that one of the most challenging issues for teachers in higher education today is the fact that their knowledge is, is exploding in every field. There is so much that students should know and students should learn. And even though knowledge is exploding, the length of courses is not getting any longer. And in fact, there's some pressure to make time in college shorter because it's very expensive for students to go to college. So faculty really struggle with this enormous amount of material uh, that they need to get across to students. And um, I think that it's, it's challenging because not only is there all this information, but now technology has really changed the accessibility of information. So it's not all in books and in the library. It's online. It's in the internet on the World Wide Web. And so how do we teach students how to access this information? How do we teach students how to evaluate it? Because you can post anything you want on the internet, you know. So I think that the whole sort of role of content in education has really changed and that that's a big challenge for faculty as well. The second problem I think that's a challenge, which I noticed changed across my years teaching is that we are now admitting to college a much more diverse and uh, broadly prepared 
The brightest and best are not the only students who are going to college now. Uh, a whole range of students with different abilities and backgrounds are going to college, which I think is a wonderful thing because a college education really enables people to earn a much better living and to have a richer sort of life. But faculty are teaching students now who are not particularly well prepared for college. And these are faculty who are content expertise. They know a lot about biology or psychology or any of these disciplines. They don't necessarily know a lot about how students learn or how to teach that in ways that promote students learning so I think that's a challenge for faculty as well. Well I think that it's a really great topic because I think a lot of times assessment kind of misses the point. It's sort of summative, it's evaluative, it's judgments and what we really need if we're interested in improving uh, education and improving learning is more formative assessment, assessment that is more diagnostic, more descriptive, that helps people to sort of develop awareness of themselves as learners, to be able to identify what kind of skills they use when they're problem solving or critical thinking. And so I really think that it's a great topic to sort of open up the understanding of assessment and make it a more positive and constructive process. I think that the scholarship of teaching and learning movement has been really excellent in drawing faculty's attention to the fact that educational practice can be evidence-based, that there is research that individual faculty can generate themselves, that they can study in a kind of a research sense what's happening in their classroom and write materials about that. It's a way of getting faculty to understand that what they need to know about teaching and learning can come from a variety of different sources. Most Mostly what faculty learn about teaching, college faculty do, is that they learn it in, from experience by teaching. Yes. But there's a world of additional information and I think the SOTL movement has been really good in sort of opening people's awareness to the fact that there are other ways to sort of learn and study about teaching and learning. So it's been an important movement, I believe. Well, I think that it's an opportunity for faculty who are teaching these particular student groups to learn some things about instructional strategies that work particularly well, that serve these populations particularly well. And so it's a really kind of a grassroots sort of research. It happens in individual, in, in individual classrooms and it's done by individual faculty members so that it would a enable the faculty who are teaching here to develop those kind of strategies and approaches there to develop their understanding of learning in ways that are really going to enable them to help these students. So I think that it could make a very great co uh, contribution given the mission of this institution and the purposes you're trying to serve.